Hi students, in this video we will discuss about the working of an inverter, right? So it is a MOSFET or IGBT based single phase full bridge inverter connected to R load, right? This is the experiment. Now what do you mean by inver inverter? Inverter is nothing but which converts DC to AC, right? Almost everyone would have have this device in your house or home, right? Which converts a DC which is coming from a battery it converts it into AC for our what to say our uh, home uh, domestic loads right you know what is an inverter now now to obtain AC voltage by using DC voltage from an IGBT based single phase full bridge inverter for different modulation techniques this word you have to note different modulation techniques to measure the output voltage for different frequencies and duty cycles so this is the name of the experiment like as we say inverter there is something called PWM technique right pulse width modulation technique so there are different kinds kinds of this PWM technique so that is what we'll be discussing in this uh, experiment or in this video we'll see what are the apparatus required here the apparatus required is single phase full bridge inverter module right and then we need a rheostat we need CRO and we need a multimeter right so these are the things what we require now yeah this is the tabular column as I told you there are so many kinds of pulse width, pulse modulation pulse width modulation the first one is single pulse width modulation the second one is multi pulse width modulation the third one is trapezoidal modulation and the fourth one is staircase modulation right so everything if you see the tabular column remains the same so what is there here here the frequency is constant but we are changing the duty cycle right here the frequency is fixed but here we are changing the duty cycle whereas here the duty cycle is fixed and the frequency is changing right so for one modulation we'll have two tabular columns one with constant uh, frequency and the other one with this other one is with constant duty cycle right so same with uh, everything pulse width modulation multi pulse width modulation and then we have trapezoidal modulation and staircase modulation right so these are some of the some of the what to say some of the pulse width modulation which we'll be using so now i'll tell you uh, so these are the uh, different kinds of uh, what to say modulations what we have so this one is uh, single pulse width modulation as you can see there are only one pulse for every uh, half cycle right and this is multiples so multiple pulse means we'll have multiple pulses for both positive half cycle and negative half cycle and the next one is uh, sign uh, triangle modulation or trapezoidal modulation so trapezoidal modulation what you can what is the difference between multi pulse modulation and this one you can see that the width of each pulse will be different width of each pulse will be different so this will give you the sinusoidal effect sinusoidal effect in the output so the RMS value will be close to sinusoidal like this right and this is staircase modulation so what is the difference between this and this now here we had decreasing increasing 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 and again decreasing right but whereas here it is slowly i mean initially it is in the decreasing order and slowly it will become at the increasing order right you can see the pulse width here starting it will be less and by ending it will be more so this is when we compare a carrier wave wave with a staircase a staircase modulation we get this kind of waveform so how did we get these kind of wave waveforms for a single pulse width modulation when we consider if you have something like this right and now this will be the zero line and now if I if I if I compare a waveform like this if I compare a waveform like this with this particular waveform so what happens here is now wherever wherever the, uh, the what to say this waveform is more the, the triangular kind of waveform is more there I'll get a pulse right so there I'll get a pulse so this is one pulse now here it is more again so I'll get a pulse here right and similarly for the other waveforms so that is how we'll get this waveform now how to get the other one now the other one is with a constant pulse for the constant pulse this is how we'll be comparing that is we'll have a waveform like this we can have n number of waveforms 
and below also you'll have like this right now this will be the zero line now what we'll be doing is we'll have one more uh, wave which will be comparing that is like this now if I have a waveform like this now when I compare these two wherever the rectangular wherever the triangular wave is more there we'll get the pulses right so that is like this one two three four five and downwards also one two three four and five so that is how you get the waveforms for multi multiple pulse right similarly how do you get for sinusoidal that is the third one that is when you have a sinus sorry the line is not proper yes so consider a waveform like this so if we have a sinusoidal waveform right and if I have the waveforms here like this to compare not this triangular waveform so here if you have this kind of pattern so wherever you can see here it will be less in the beginning and again it will be more so that when you compare when you when you obtain the waveforms you will get this kind of waveforms here right again you have modified sine wave pwm also which will have it in the theory but not in the lab right similarly trapezoidal how it will be so we'll have a waveform like this constant waveform and we'll be comparing a sawtooth waveform like this like this so that is when you'll get this kind of waveforms i hope you have understood what is pwm now we'll compare two waveforms and we'll obtain these resultant pulses which will be given to the switches of inverter right so as of now you have to remember this now we'll move on to the circuit yeah i'll, I'll leave about the procedure you can go through that by pausing the video now this is the circuit what we have uh, for uh, the inverter right so uh, then this you'll understand the, in the next slide better yeah this is the kit which we'll be using in, in the lab and we need a CRO also and we need a rheostat so these are the things what we require now we'll see how the connections are done now you see here this is the full bridge uh, what to say inverter which we'll be using for this experiment this is the circuit which we'll be using so there are four switches one two three and four there are four switches similarly here also we have four switches one two three and four there are four switches here right now that is one thing and we need a load so that load is here and we need a DC supply and the DC supply is here right DC supply is here now we'll see how to do the connections and there are four switches right one two three four there are four switches so there are four sets of switching pulses for each switch for each switch there will be two one is positive and one is negative that is for the pulses so we have four switching pulses here right so now we'll see how to do the connections Yes. So now what we'll do? Yes. Now here, this is a supply. This is supply, and this is a switch actually, which is not. Yeah, this is a switch actually, which is not visible properly. So now what we can do? 
we can directly give the what to say supply to the switch and do the experiment if you want the switch in the circuit you can include this part you can include this part but since uh, in the video it might be complicated to explain this i'll directly connect the supply to the switches and then i'll explain the operation right so now what we'll do yes now see here there are four switches first we'll connect the bridge right so here t1 and t3 is connected right t4 and t2 is connected so i'll do this connection so i'll connect one wire from here to here and another wire from here to here so what are the connections we did now this connection we have done this connection we have done now we'll do this connection so how to do that connection so that is this one this connection we have already done here now we'll do this connection now these two connections so if i want to do that those two connections so i'll connect it like this now a bridge is formed right with the four switches now how the uh, what to say uh, the load is connected now one terminal of the load one terminal of the load is connected here and the other terminal of the load other terminal of the load is connected here correct so here one connection and here the other connection so here also you can see this load is connected between this and this one correct so we have connected the load also now we have to connect the supply so how to connect the supply this dc volt uh, voltage source is connected like this that is positive is connected to t1 and negative is connected to t4 negative so positive i'll connect it to t1 and negative i'll connect it to t4 right we have done that connection also now now we have to do the switching pulses so switching pulses i'll take green ink Yes. So now this green one, this is for H1, so I'll connect it to H1, and this is H2, I'll connect it to H2, right? And this is for H3, and this is for I mean L1, and this is for L2, right? So green to green. Now again the last connection, that is black to black. that is now this one i'll connect it here and this is for l1 so this one i'll connect it here and this is h2 this will be connected here and this l2 will be connected here i hope you have understood the connections here so now how to do the experiment now here we need crvo also so this crvo will be connected across the crvo will be connected across the load using the probe using the probe to observe the waveforms to observe the waveforms now when we switch on the supply and give some voltage here maybe like 30 volts what it is shown here right 30 volts now this is the mode for changing various pulses right increment decrement mode everything will be present here when you keep on pressing this mode you will get all the way all the waveforms the first one was single pulse width modulation multi pulse width trapezoidal and staircase right once you set the once once you set the uh, what to say type of pwm to single single pulse width modulation then you can change the duty cycle or frequency as we saw in the tabular column and then what you have to do is you have to take the multimeter also and you have to measure what is the voltage here for each case keeping this in ac mode so this is a multimeter Where you have to connect a multimeter to the serial stat, and you have to note down the voltages, and you can see the patterns in this CRO. And you can see the pattern in this CRO, right? So for various modes, you have to repeat this experiment. So here you cannot write the values directly. So just know how to do the how to do this experiment. So in the lab, you will be able to take the values. So for this, it is very difficult to take the values by ourselves. By assuming, we cannot do, right? so now here coming to this coming to this one so for each for each pulse width modulation we'll have two types of 
tabular columns one is for constant frequency and one is for constant duty cycle so duty cycle you can adjust and write it here output voltage this voltages are measured in cro right these voltages are measured in cro and anyway this kind of pulses can be seen from the cro this kind of pulses can be seen in the cro so this experiment the observation is done through cro and the results are written the results are written here through the multimeter through the multimeter right so this is how you do the inverter experiment now here you can see that so here how to understand this circuit we have just seen how to do the connections now how to uh, understand this circuit i'll just explain the working of the circuit what happens here in the positive half cycle now in the positive half cycle this switch t1 and t2 will be on right so what happens to the yeah so positive half cycle t1 will be on and t2 will be on t1 and t2 will be on so this will be the path for the current this will be the path for the current so now how the current is flowing through the resistor it is in this direction correct so this is the first mode of operation now in the second mode what happens in the second mode what happens is t3 and t4 will be connected so now here it will t3 and t4 will be working so t3 resistor and t4 so now how is the direction of the current here the direction of the current is in this direction so positive half cycle it will be on the other one side and negative half cycle it will be on the other side that is how this dc is getting converted to ac using this circuit using this circuit right so this is the working of inverter i hope you have understood the connections right so doing the connections is very important here and how you, you have to know how to set the mode here right by setting different mode you can get the different output voltages using the multimeter and you can observe the patterns in cro so as of now you have to just know how to conduct this experiment whereas readings you can automatically get it from the kit once you are able to perform the experiment right thank you